please subscribe like and share good morning good day good evening wherever part of the crazy world you're coming from or watching thank you for coming to my channel and uh, partaking in this uh, technological video that we're about to uh, to get into now today we will talk about fuel ejection fuel ejection for the most part is a lot more efficient than any carburetor as far as distributing the necessary fuel for every port port injected is what we're talking about and we will touch bases on the shortcomings and advantages sure we will highlight that on on this uh, pictorial that I have uh, coming in next here and I would like to you to take note that the injector and you always hear the factor say oh they set the timing or the injector to shoot the flow right at the center of the valve and it shows it right here on this illustration that is correct when it is static but once you take into account the massive high-speed air column coming in at full throttle that injector car targeting at the center of the intake valve isn't really there anymore it's in another location and that's when we have issues with distribution around the combustion chamber why we still have issues of pistons melting on the intake side of the uh, combustion chamber now with the 4v or 4 valve head the two intake valve right here it melts okay and uh, I'll illustrate to you why that is and uh, also we'll touch bases on the next uh, following videos about direct injection direct injection or gasoline direct injection I think is a move even though it's racing inspired high-tech it's going in the wrong direction and I will show also on the uh, preceding videos on why that is not all innovations are good some of them have issues especially when it's racing inspired technology and you try to put it on uh, straight use or ba basically general uh, passenger car or truck use or even high performance street oriented uh, sports cars uh, it has serious drawbacks Port injected, I think, is the best of what we can surely have without other issues. Because there are some serious, serious uh, concerns about direct injection. But for now, watch this video and take note on this illustration. On this side of the, of the picture, you'll see uh, there's fuel is dispersed straight from the injector to the valve stem. And you'll see that it's, it's dispersed around the, the whole diameter of the valve evenly okay the factory said that their injector targeting is centered on the valve stem or the center of the valve which uh, to some people it seemed to be correct but it's far from reality and I will show you uh, before we get done here and take note of how this fuel is sprayed into the combustion chamber and look at it we'll come back The picture illustrates the injector targeting as designed by all the manufacturers from Ford, GM, uh, the European, Japanese uh, manufacturers, how they orient the injector to spray toward the center of the valve and that shows it vividly there. It's dispersing the fuel correctly around, along this side of the intake valve and the long side of the port also here uh, as shown by the arrows. But what is amazing there is that is true for the first few uh, thousands of the lift. Perhaps the first hundred or maybe less, that is correct. But while the lift progresses 
and gets larger or a more valve lift, the air column starts to speed up. And then with the momentum of the inlet charge column and the fuel being hit by this air column, injectors here flowing and the air hits it and draws it ever towards the long side of the port as illustrated by this video here. Take note, this will progressively get worse. So injector timing, like what the factory says, or injector targeting is okay when it's in a dormant state or a bench state. But that's not actually what happens when the engine is running. Like I said on one of my, my uh, topics that I wrote on the top of my column, Ben Ambi the Racing on Facebook, Airflow on a flow bench and airflow in a running engine is two completely different things. And if you look at all the responses there by some of the top cylinder head guys, uh, it, it's giving credence to what I'm trying to, to show here. And this one illustrates it even further. So check it out right here. Now, if you observe that the valve is starting to lift higher than before it's coming off the seat, and with that kind of valve action, the air column starts to speed up. And you notice now that the fuel injector spray pattern somehow gets smacked by this air column and starts to move towards the long side wall, towards the center of the port. And what you're seeing there is that once this charge air column is starting to speed up, it becomes slammed on the long side wall, as illustrated here on this video. And if you notice the short side port or the short side part of the port or intake port, it's largely bypassed. There's hardly any fuel going in that location down below all right so the port comes in and hits the long side wall there's hardly any activity here okay and from that point you can see that it'll get worse as this next video where the lift is even higher than this one just last shown and take note there's hardly any fuel column or fuel molecules on a short side radius okay and you will notice that this is so obvious and that's when we have issues with uneven fuel distribution inside the combustion chamber we may have it on the port okay ideal uh, division of every fuel for every port but that doesn't mean it's going to have it on the combustion chamber and that's just part of the engineering aspect of an imperfect world and even though it looks good injector targeting from the factory it's pointed right at the intake valve it doesn't show that watch this video again Okay, like it's shown on the video, you can see the air column as before the factory targets the injector to hit the center of the intake valve. But now you're seeing the air column has got a velocity, speed, the column charges really going at a fast pace. And when it comes in, the injector targeting is null and void. As soon as the injector spray goes up from the tip of the, the nozzle, the high speed column of air takes it and slams it on the wall. All right? So basically what you're looking at is that it comes in and 
takes it and slams it on on the long side wall of the port and again there's nothing on the short side and what you're going to end up doing there is an uneven state of fuel homogeneity or homogeneous state inside the combustion chamber where you have a lot of rich fuel around the exhaust side of the combustion chamber or exhaust valve side of the combustion chamber and serious serious lean condition on the intake side now that being said this is when we have issues with detonation or secondary uh, exp well, exp now now is explosion okay I'm always really um, surprised when somebody says the explosion inside the combustion chamber we don't have an explosion if there's an explosion that's what you call detonation or pre-ignition because I don't care if you got a four bolt main six bolt main or ten head bolts per cylinder if you have an explosion inside the combustion chamber it will blow up like a grenade okay there is no explosion happening if there is serious damage will result there is a fast burn okay and this is where we have to make uh, a distinction combustion chambers are not explosive they are a fast burn scenario anything short of an explosion that's where the quench comes into play as I as stated on other videos now let's take for a minute and I'll readjust my camera so I can show you what's going on here between a two valve from a previous explanation to a 4V what happens there and why it happens and the result here we go before we can proceed with the 4V let me touch a little bit on the 2V and the dynamics of uh, what creates an uneven combustion inside this chamber of a 2V even of a 4V with, with fuel injected when the air comes in here the heavy fuel molecules gather right about this side of the combustion chamber and what happens is that there's a rich condition on this side and when it lights up the fuel burns cooler okay on a rich condition because they, you have more carbon monoxide which has one-third the energy of carbon dioxide so anyway the slow burn or cooler burn because it doesn't have as much heat energy from the rich mixture starts to propagate here towards the exhaust and the last part to burn is right here because it's lean now what happens with the lean condition here is that the fuel molecules are farther apart and they absorb heat but at the same time there's a temperature and pre pressure spike and that's where you have detonation okay and that's why when you look at these pistons they have they melt right here on the intake side of the valve pocket there because of that exact scenario okay and remember lean power drops dramatically compared to rich mixtures okay when you got a lean mixture you see the power drop real quick rich because of erratic combustion of a rich mixture it slowly cuts down on your power not as much as if you had a lean situation now let's go to the 4v like the intake there you have the same situation here here's the intake port comes at a very high angle it comes in and like on that video showed most of the fuel slammed on this side okay on that video we posted earlier all the fuel are on this side fuel with air again this side here as that picture showed you the fuel bypasses this area here again fuel spark on the center now it goes this way it combusts more towards the exhaust side than it does on the intake because the like I said this is lean here air and fuel molecules got more excess oxygen and the fuel molecules are farther apart so they kind of like don't bump into each other they're farther out so they slowly jump from one fuel molecule to the next and by that time you're going to end up with a lean 
pressure and temperature spike here and boom again that's why you see four four v heads v8 six and eight or even 12 cylinder they burn that side of the intake valve pocket because of that exact scenario All right, very lean condition here. This is the last part to get any kind of combustion or uh, flame propagation to cover that area. And what you want is to completely burn that area there so that you turn that into chemical energy instead of an explosion. Okay, and uh, what else can I say about that whole scenario? It is very, very important that that you achieve that whole situation here again um, trying to play your quench between here and there is the critical part in essence really when it's not combusting there that's what they call end gases there are end gases here and end gases there those part of the combustion process the end gases are actually the ones transferring the heat from the chamber to the piston down to the water jackets or to the cooling uh, cylinders the water jackets all around the cylinder and around right here on the combustion chamber side okay the end gases do that they usually reside right about here and they transfer the heat so uh, quench also is a cooling medium not necessarily uh, to control the combustion uh, propagation or the combustion acceleration to an explosion they process end gases that helps in the cooling system of the engine so here we are like I always stated we may have a situation where uh, fuel injection does indeed uh, divide all the fuel air evenly inside each individual ports but after that it's whatever happens a Hail Mary uneven uh, combustion dynamics here into the cylinder same thing with the two valve heads right here also have those issues okay so this too is just a fact of life that's just the way they function and uh, we just got to take it as it is and there are other remedies and we'll cover that um, in the next uh, videos but for the meantime i hope this is clear and uh, hope uh, uh, please subscribe share and like this video so we can keep this going and i'll keep uh, giving out good informative videos that uh, will help us and everybody else understand the combustion uh, theory and uh, facts or fallacies whatever you might call it so we can separate uh, uh, the real thing from wishful thinking thank you very much bye